So welcome everybody to this Dorofus webinar, an introduction to Vibis and the benefits of connecting your assets in Dorofus. Here's our agenda for today, uh, which will give you some time to briefly read through. I'm Matt Henson from Dorofus, and for this session, I'll be joined by my colleague Jasper Wong and Nathan Semos from Vibis. We're aware of some of you may know about Dorofus and some of you may know about Vibis. So we thought we, we thought we would start by giving a brief intro on into both. I'll give a short five minute intro on Dorofus and Nathan will do the same for Vibis. In part three, we'll then hand over to Jasper, who will spend 15 to 20 minutes running through some key workflows and use cases of Vibis within the Dorofus project as listed and highlight some benefits. Once this is done, we'll open up for Q&A, where TK from Vibis will also be on hand to answer questions. We ask for questions to be left in the Q&A tab. Sometimes you use the chat, but we'd like you to use the Q&A tab today, as we cannot unmute you in this session. So on, on to the presentation, and Dorofus is one of a number of open BIM brands within the Nemechek group of companies. Other brands you may know would include Bluebeam and Celebri. So here's, here's the problem as we see it. Building projects have many data sets to be captured and coordinated, such as client requirements, architectural, engineering, construction, and asset data. Consolidating all this information is a big challenge, and this is what Dorofus sets out to do. Our concept is to have all stakeholders work in a single centralized database connected to the models. Geometry is best managed within the graphical model, and data is best managed externally, but still linked. Also, by separating client requirements from the design, it means we can compare and validate the design meets client needs. So we can use this uh, room schematic to sort of show how it works, really. Starting with high level project requirements and hosting of standards such as Vibis and being able to define functional levels and different data ontologies. From basic room properties, such as room name, number and programmed area. Onto room data and functional requirements, everything from occupancy count to door hardware to daylight requirements. You name it, it can be recorded and validated in Dorofus. Item lists allow different parties to take responsibility and ownership of the assets they're responsible for, whether it be equipment, furniture, fixtures or, or finishes. This can happen both within and across rooms in your building. For example, engineers can plan systems, components and their classifications, as well as installation requirements and schedules. And remember, all of this linked to the BIM. So in the end, we give you a complete picture of everything that is required to plan, design and construct the building based on the collective data or knowledge of the various stakeholders. We like to say we democratize the data. Just imagine for a moment where all this data would be held otherwise on your project, whether in a, in a model or in a spreadsheet, whether it's live or up to date, and is it really connected? Moving forward, Dorofus will be used more and more, we think, to record asset information requirements and create unique asset data from the information being recorded and hopefully providing seamless FM documentation along the way, which is brought even more into focus with this collaboration with Vibis and what we're going to dig into today. So I'll leave you with that and just sort of summarise all of the function and benefits of Dorofus into what we like to call our Ten Commandments. We, we basically did developed a list of core functions of Dorofus and feel sure any of you watching will need to tick at least three or four of these and they can directly benefit you on any sizable project. We'll be happy to follow up after this webinar to demonstrate any of these capabilities. So we hope that provides a bit of a refresher or even a new insight into Dorofus and now I'll pass over to Nathan to introduce Vibis and following that we can show you how we can work together to help you even more. Thanks, Matt. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. 
Uh, today we're going to talk about what VBIS is, the partnership that has been formed with Darufus, and the benefit that this provides the industry. For those who don't know, VBIS stands for Virtual Buildings Information System, and we have created an asset classification standard for maintainable assets. So my name is Nathan Simos, and I'm the Executive Manager. We also have TK Wang, our Senior Account Manager, who is also on the webinar today and on hand to answer any questions. So a little bit of background about Vebus. So Vebus was formed approximately three to four years ago. It was funded via a government grant from the Victorian government. Uh, since then, it has evolved and we have the support of various governments for new builds across various states in Australia. One key fact is that Vebus is not a software product, it's an enabler. So Vebus has its own brand and it was an, a primarily an entity form to develop and promote a, the Vebus standard, which is currently being widely adopted by industry. So why was Vebus formed? Primarily, it was due to inconsistent asset classification, and that's in regards to maintainable assets. So can you imagine uh, if we are all, as, we, as current state, calling assets different things, how do you get consistency? So the person that might sit next to you at your workplace calls it one thing, let alone having differences from everyone on the floor, of your building and then it expands to your building, expands to the state and then nationwide. So we have to get consistent in what we call um, our items. So one key output of that is very poor project information for handover. So as information and, and you know, it's really, really with a lot of effort put into the design phase. Well, what happens with that? How does that information cross that gap? and get into the operate phase. So we really feel that um, Vivas has uh, been formed to really stop that data waste, to be able to use that information um, in that operate and maintain world accordingly. One key aspect is that Vivas is really provides that support for industry. So we're, we're here, we're listening and we're evolving. So we, we welcome the feedback. One key component is that clients owners don't always have access to their information. They, you know, they have people that work on their behalf. So we really feel that this classification would be able to provide owners information from multiple information sources, not limited to just owners, it's, it's anyone. So as you have fragmented data sets, you can use the VV string of information to find and retrieve and really find those uh, assets in, in you know, hard to find places. So this will enable and primarily, you know, better planning, capital and life cycle analysis. And it's really there to connect technologies and potential digital twin capabilities. So what is VBIS? It's the data standard to connect information across the built environment. So what is Vivas? It's actually a two-part standard. So the first part is it's a detailed classification structure in an in a orderly fashion with some common terms and prescribed information to set up the industry. The second component to that is that it's one having the data and calling it in the correct fashion, but the second component is how do you find that information and how do you find that in an open structure? So Vibus actually provides a standard search syntax to retrieve information and we help um, build that out in our partnerships and also to go and get that information across open platforms so the user has information at their fingertips. So in regards to the actual classifications, you can, the, the actual tags, you can download these tags from our website and uh, we'll provide that on the slide deck, the VB's website. We have about 7,000 uh, classification tags over various disciplines. So some of the features that we find are really appealing is it's alphabetic. It has up to four levels of granular information more importantly, consistent and therefore searchable and easily integrated into systems. 
So just to show you as an example on the right hand side there, we have a, a string of the, in green is the Vivas code and we have four levels identified there. So level one, we have mechanical, which that is a discipline level. So that really relates to the entity or really who's going to maintain that certain feature. Level two is a product. In our example, we have pump PU. And then level three and four is just providing that extra information that we need to enable uh, you to, to manage that asset a bit better and, and contain certain information. So if you don't have a question we get asked a lot is, well, I don't know that information. Well, at the very least, you can start off with level one and two. As you as you build out in existing buildings, you, you may have contractors that actually supply that information back to you or you you. you you undertake that analysis in-house. So that's Vivas as a string of information. Um, it normally gets put into a cell into certain products or, or asset lists, but it's not just limited to uh, services. We have uh, a lot of information and we've got two examples that refers to a structural string of information and also a security string there. So it's um, it's across 80, uh, 28 disciplines and um, we, we have a lot of tags available. So just in comparison in regards to, you know, uh, in a design world where we primarily have, you know, uh, international standards being a uni class and omni class. Well, Vivas was created because it provides a, more information, uh, usable information that um, is really centered on the maintainable assets um, of information, whereas other programs are, are, are about the construction phase of construction type of assets. So an example we've got here at the top is the mechanical chill chiller. Um, the, the, the top component level one's ME, the second uh, drop down is ME CHR, the chiller, and then you go into the air cooled uh, and then the subtype, and you can go further down into the package there called and so forth. But uh, the difference is that you'll notice that, um, that with uni class, we've got a particular string of information and that's, that applies over a couple of assets. It, and the, the, you'll see the dashes there. Well, the dashes is why VBIS was formed, just to provide that extra information. And then obviously on in Omniclass, you have a series of numbers. It's not very uh, user friendly and it's hard to, to remember um, and be across all the time. So in getting the uh, VBIS tag information into BIM, we have the, the, the classification is for product codes. We have two parameters that we want you to put into the model and a VBIS code and a VBIS description. Um, as you can see there, we've in the red bolded, it might not be uh, too easy to see, but we have our VBIS tag in there and um, it obviously gets input in, it can be Revit and um, Archicad and it has a direct import export into Rufus. So we recommend that the VBIS tags get implemented throughout the design and that can be done at various stages of, of important milestones. So our full process is identified on the VBIS website. You can speak to us and we're more, more than happily, it's been referred through from Derifus to where uh, VBIS, we're happy to help. So the really, the key point is that VBIS can be the glue, the connector, the enabler across different systems, and they could be fragmented systems, but VBIS is system agnostic and it can connect uh, siloed information. It can be quick. It's an open standard, a true open standard, and it can facilitate information handover. So you could, uh, can imagine a world where you've got a maintenance system, document management system, building management system, all connected and talking through, for instance, from a, a BIM or a 3D model. So it's, it's very uh, powerful and, and we're the connector in this ecosystem. So that search syntax, which I mentioned, is, is the key component that we can embed. And you click a button, you search for information and information is displayed at the asset. So for instance, you could show maintenance records, performance monitoring, construction records, or even search for parts and components, which we have some manufacturers are now cataloging, um, naming their catalog, uh, product catalog with 
VBIS components, which is really a, a great step forward. So I'd just like to hand over to Jasper, who can um, take you on the next component. Thanks, Nathan. Now, as um, Nathan has mentioned about the VBIS benefits, uh, there are also benefits of using VBIS in Dorofus. The key is having all your data in one central location. It helps you to manage and audit the project data, which will be used in asset phase of a building life cycle. Having all the data in one place also means VBIS codes can be managed across numerous Revit, Archicad, or IFC models. Our aim for this section of the webinar is to demonstrate the benefits of VBIS in Dorofus and for you to see it in actions from importing it into Dorofus through to exporting it in reports. So we'll get right into it. To get VBIS into Dorofus, the first thing is to get the VBIS classification, which can be downloaded from the VBIS website. After filling up a short form, you will find a, a Dorofus database import file. The classification in this file has been formatted for our software to import the classification. There is also a written guide if you want to implement the classification on your own. Dorofus can import a classification when we set up your project database. Alternatively, you can also import the classification to your database anytime during your project. And we'll briefly take you through the import process now. To import VBIS, we will use the import classification from Excel function. You will require database administrator permissions to see this function. So any project collaborators uh, who would like to use VBIS on your project, please reach out to your database administrator. Importing VBIS is a straightforward process. First, you'll need to create a VBIS classification type. Note the naming that we're using. Uh, it's called VBIS must not add or edit. It acts as a reminder for both admins and users that the classification should not be altered. If you need new codes, uh, please reach out to VBIS directly. This classification will be used with the items modules in Dorofus and hence ensure that the items modules is selected. Next is to use the import classification from Excel function, where we will identify the VBIS classification file and select the classification type we created earlier. VBIS is a four level classification, so we will need to set the number of classes to four. Mapping the classes to the Excel columns is a key step in this setup, as it tells the software how to associate information from Excel to Dorofus. When you have completed these setups, you can start the import process. After the import is completed, we will now browse back into the item modules uh, and selecting an item, we can see that the classification is ready for use. You will find the classification in the properties panel uh, relating to the item. We will move on to assigning VBIS codes. After importing the classification, the next step is mapping the codes to the building elements in the database. You can assign classification either individually or in bulk. Early on in the project, uh, bulk assignments will help you assign the codes to multiple items quickly. For example, we're now assigning STEC to all the claddings in the project. As the project progresses and you need more granularity, using the centrifugal palm as an example, you can assign or update the classification by browsing directly within the classification structure. Or you can search specific keywords to help find the exact classification you need. In this case, we are assigning MEPUCESLC to this item. If you prefer to use Excel to carry out the mapping, 
we will suggest that you export the item list from Jerofus with item ID. You will need to use this identifier when re-importing the Excel file. We will also suggest to export the attribute for VBIS codes where you input the classification codes. If you are doing it via this method, it may require a bit more care and effort in ensuring that the codes in the Excel matches those in the database. So we'll now move on to the next part of the demonstration, which is about asset numbering. At the handover stage, one of the activities is to create a unique asset numbering for various elements. This can sometimes be a challenging task to create unique uh, numbers for all the occurrences. Within the software, we have developed an asset numbering system and we can use and we can use to include the classification into the final number. This asset number can be used to track elements on site or be synchronized into geometric models for easy identification and coordination. To have the auto numbering function working, there are a few settings to activate, such as ensuring the classification is auto generating number and set up for occurrence numbering. If you'd like to use this function, please reach out to our customer success team after the webinar. They'll be more than happy to walk you through uh, the setup. This unique asset number is made up of two parts, and we will now break it down uh, to explain the different parts. The first part is the classification number. It is a combination of the VBIS classification and the unique number generated for this classification. The second part of that number is a serial number. Each occurrence is also automatically assigned a unique serial number. In the design phase, you may have occurrences with quantities of more than one. These occurrences can be split into individual instances and the unique serial numbers will be generated for the new instances. Combining the classification number and the serial number generates the unique asset number. Looking at the three centrifugal chillers, each of the chillers have a unique asset number which you can now use on your project. Moving on to connections through hyperlinking. The Jerofa software can concatenate different attribute field values. This provides flexibility and ability to create custom values a project may require, such as unique codes or URL. We will now demonstrate the second aspect of VBIS, which is creating a search syntax to get asset data from a different system. The centrifugal palm has a four level uh, VBIS codes. Selecting the occurrence shows four URLs linking to an external system containing more data and information. Each of those URLs is created dynamically and filters the external database for the required information. Within Derofus, the URLs for the occurrences are created automatically. The syntax is made up of the static parts in black and the dynamic part in red. So if you select an element with a different VBIS code, the URL will filter the displayed information of the external website based on uh, the VBIS codes. Selecting a URL based on higher level VBIS codes will present more information as there are more items grouped at that level. For example, when we select the discipline level URL, it will show all the equipment uh, under the ME classification. In this case, there were two bits of info. You may ask, what happens to the URL if I assign only to the third level classification? In this case, Drawfirst will only show the URL up to the classification levels assigned. And here's a thought. If your project requires that all elements have a fourth level VBIS code, um, you can display the fourth level URL in the occurrence panel and quickly isolate the elements that have a blank URL, uh, which indicates that the items uh, would not be having a fourth level uh, VBIS codes. And you can select that and uh, update those quickly if required. Moving on to outputs and deliverables. Having all the data visible in the software is important. It is equally important that the information can be displayed in a concise output. We will be showing three reports 
that will be useful for project stakeholders. The first is a room equipment data report. It is based on a room data sheet showing different room data from the engineering disciplines. One major difference is the occurrences are displaying the VBIS codes. And we believe this, this will help project stakeholders at handover to view and sign off the equipment for the room. There are many finishes used on a project and the codes used in the design and construction phase are usually different to those at asset management phase. The second report is a materials catalog that shows all the finishes that are used in the project. The VBIS codes in the first column identifies the material from the asset management perspective. The report also shows corresponding codes used by the design team during documentation, thus helping the asset manager find the right material codes uh, on the drawings. If you are using Drawfirst to manage your design and construction data, you can also use Drawfirst to collect all your asset data at the end of a construction phase. You can export the data into an Excel format as a register. This example register shows the VBIS codes, the asset numbering incorporating the VBIS codes, the asset name, other identifiers, and where it's located. Of course, there are many other fields of information that goes into the asset register. This information can now be imported into your asset management software package, or you can use our API to access the data directly to enable uh, lifecycle asset management. We have come to the end of the demonstration part of this webinar, and I hope that it has highlighted these benefits of using VBS classification mm -hmm. in Drawfus. And I'll hand it back to you, Matt. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Jasper. Um, I guess we'll leave these benefits up again for you to digest. Um, from my side, and I guess listening to clients, um, one of the biggest things about this, this connectivity and this relationship is the ability to take this VBIS classification code, use the Dorofus unique identifier uh, technique to create a VBIS number, and then create a unique asset number from both based on the specific split out occurrence. I mean, it's, it's what I think a lot of you are looking to do, and it's a great solution for that. Um, Jasper also showed that example asset register output. I mean, remember this is coming from one place, from you know, and not needing to be pulled together from from multiple sources. And I think I'll just finally underline that you know we've shown you, uh, Jasper showed you initially how to how you could do it yourself in terms of importing the VBIS classification. But any new project that you would set up with the Rofus can be set up out of the box as part of the new project implementation with with the VBIS code. Awesome. OK, so let's move on to um, the, the, the next section, which is Q&A. And I noticed we do have quite a few uh, really good questions, both placed in the chat and in the Q&A. Um, I guess I'll, the first question would go to the guys from Vibis, and I'm going to uh, in, introduce TK into the panel now as well. Um, the first question is, um, does Vibis have detailed mapping from Uniclass and Omniclass? through to VBIS to enable that migration, if, if that, that is required from, from one to the other? Yeah, thank, uh, thank you for that question. Um, I, I guess the short answer is yes, we do. Um, please feel free to reach out to us. We do have a bit of a process in order to uh, to communicate how that would occur, but yeah, happy, happy to have a chat with you um, afterwards to see how we might be able to help with that. Excellent. And the next question is, um, one of the biggest sort of health facility, well, the guidelines in terms of health facility guidelines. Can you guys give any updates to any discussions or, or some anything in the public domain in terms of Oz HFG adopting this down the line? Yeah, Matt, I'll, I'll jump in here. Uh, I think the first question is uh, New South Wales Health Infrastructure. Have they adopted it? The short answer is yes, they have adopted VBIS and um, we're currently working through that implementation. Uh, so that's a good step forward. And the second component is, is Oz HFG on board with that? So from that point of view, uh, we have been working with AHIA, Australasian Health Infrastructure Alliance, and VBIS has been mentioned in the BIM data guidelines. I don't yet think that it has yet been published. 
However, we are definitely wanting to align with Oz HFG, and that is a work in progress, but um, hopefully some good signs ahead. I mean, I'd set out a challenge, certainly from our point of view, in terms of the hosting of the standards. It would be great, you know, when somebody's running a healthcare project in Australia or New Zealand, that, uh, you know, when they load up the, uh, the Australia, the Oz HFG, it also comes incorporated, you know, out of the box, as it were, with with um, with Vibis. That would be that would be the dream. Um, I'm sure that, that there's there's plans afoot for that. But yeah, um, I guess one of the one, there's a question here about IFC, and I think I think we haven't really talked about IFC. But uh, there's two questions I'll try and put together, and we can talk about IFC. There's a question: Can you once we've created this unique asset number in Dorofus, can you then um, in, uh, can we sort of sync that back to Revit or Archicad or IFC? So, I guess you know, maybe Jasper, you could you could answer that one. Oh yes, very simply, uh, it's a yes. We can uh, sync those values back into uh, Revit, Archicad, and IFC models. Yeah, I think we have another question from Chris here. Uh, Chris Edwards, IFC question mark. I mean, you know, in terms of Dorofus and the functionality of Dorofus and the ability to to import and export in in IFC, you know, we're very much a an open BIM platform, so that that comes without saying with the, with the software. But yeah, I don't think we wanted to add anything to that. Uh, I will just say I'll, I'll add that um, our desktop client, uh, you can view the IFC models with it, so you can get the uh, and and from there you can synchronize the data, so you can view your data in connection or with the context of a model. Um, our Drawfus web, uh, you can upload those IFC uh, files onto uh, Drawfus web, uh, where you can do the same thing, viewing your uh, data with your model. And I'll also go as far as to say you can actually do that uh, using your um, mobile devices, your iPad or uh, laptop when you're on the go. Yeah. Well, I think, I think um, I'm just checking in the questions one more time. Um, I think that's all the questions we have. I mean, unless you guys have any other closing comments, we promise to keep the audience for 30 minutes and we're one minute over that. So well done for doing that. But um, any any closing comments or or, or oh, we've got one more question coming in. Um, do, does it work? It's in the chat. I'm a very good host here, excuse me. Um, thanks for the question, Marnie. Does it work with Revit Asset Manager? I will need to find out more about what Revit Asset Manager does before I can re answer to that question. Um, yeah, Marnie, I'll have to get back to you on that, unfortunately. Yeah. The other thing to say is if there is any other questions that you, you, you can think of, please leave them in the chat for the, you know, after the after the session's finished. Um, and we will we'll obviously try to get back to you on those. I think Marnie just made a um, clarification there with her question. Uh, she meant, does it work with Revit Classification Manager? And I'm wondering whether, TK, you are able to help with that. Uh, you are on mute, sorry. That was bound to happen, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming, Mani, um, what you're referring to there is the BIM interoperability tools for classification. Uh, if that is the question, then the answer is yes, you could put it in through that mechanism but again with the uh by importing it through the rufus then you sort of you don't have to worry about that one process as well so that you're keeping all that asset data um within the derufus platform but otherwise yes it does work with the bitman droppability tool as well it just it comes down to how you set the the syncing up between derufus and revit and between the, the exactly. revit family and the derufus attribute it's all connectable basically yes yeah. excellent all right Fantastic. Well, um, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I hope uh, I've certainly got a few things out of today's session and I hope the, the audience has. We will take your feedback. This is the start of a, a relationship between Dorofus and Vibis. There will be specific things. You know, we've gone through some pretty chunky things there in terms of asset setup and, and numbering. We, we'd probably be looking at deep diving into some of these things in terms of uh, specific functionality as we move forward, but I'd really like to thank Nathan and TK for, for joining us today. I think it's a, it's a great relationship. We're really pleased to have you, and we're really pleased to be uh, Vibis enabled, as it were. Um, we'll move on to the next slide, probably, and just, just wrap up by saying um, 
this this session has been recorded and will be reposted onto the Dorofus YouTube channel under our presentation uh, webinars playlist. Uh, we'll send you an email when that's available. So yeah, thank you very much, everybody, uh, for for joining us. Um, that concludes the the uh, presentation or the webinar for today. Uh, as we leave, as you leave, we'll leave all of our details again on the screen there. And we look forward very much to catching up with you again soon. Um, bye bye for now. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all.